And now, back to PCR Radio. I made a little list of some of the things that you discussed. Bestiality, abortion, AIDS, Irishmen who drink, nuns, premature ejaculation, breastfeeding, and farts. This is PTR Radio. And welcome everybody to another edition of PTR Radio here on the fabulous Intar Web. But you know what? You know who that intro is going to go over well with? Specifically, Ooh. the people who are going to be really happy to hear that intro. The people Ooh. at Adobe that I talked to today that goes, oh, you have a podcast? What is it? Maybe I should listen. No. <laughs> no, you shouldn't. You yeah. absolutely should not listen. And I, I really should just censor myself when they say, what's your, what's your podcast? Yeah, at so, least wait until you get the cut-down version of... Uh... The one McKenna wrote for us, so that we uh, have something better for them to listen to. <laughs> but yeah, so, I'm meeting with all these vendors. Uh -huh. I, I'm meeting with all these vendors the last few weeks, and everybody goes, "Oh, you you have a really professional setup. I mean, you have a microphone, and, and you know, you, you can headphones. I mean, you must do a radio show." And I go, "Actually, yeah, I kind of do. Uh, you know." <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I, I do a podcast. And then today I was on a meeting and it's like, whoa, I wonder when the show is. I'm like, actually, it's tonight. <laughs> so I'm like, I can't help myself, Mike. I'm just trying to get more listeners. Well, listen, I'm I'm worse, okay, because I went on a Zoom meeting, you know, pretty much just like this, and somebody no, oh, wrong side. Somebody's <laughs> like, What's that? You said, "Well, that's said, Butterstown uh -oh. Gifts and Creations. They're a, they're a great local well, business to support." So I had to explain the three of them. Mm -hmm. I said, "You know, the 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 buzzard here. See if I can do this. The buzzard. That's mm -hmm. the logo from a hockey club. This here is the wife's business, and then this one here is my radio show." And I kind of like went, "Oh." <laughs> But but kinda did like they kind of like how Ralphie at the at the Christmas table was like or at the dinner table was like I want official Red Rider to be gone. Ooh. <laughs> I I always love the follow up question though. Radio show, what channel are you on? <laughs> oh oh oh, you think we you think we're that successful? Do you? Yeah, no, no, we're not even successful enough to be on Sirius XM's app. <laughs> so that's how. <laughs> ah, terrible. Oh, terrible. Yes. Which, speaking of Sirius XM, because because this is how our show goes. If you're not familiar with the show, we just tangent. Ooh, shiny thing. Uh, so yeah, um, my wife and I were were driving home the other day, and we're in her car, which I signed her up for Sirius XM, and she goes, "Man, I really wish they had a Christmas channel on Sirius." And I said, "Well, I'm I'm sure that they do. I can't imagine they've got an like an Elvis Costello." channel i certainly they have at least one christmas channel so of course i i launch Yelly. yeah I, I, I so i so i i launch up my my browser and i go oh yeah no they have 17 christmas channels depending upon what you want to listen to and i start rattling through them mike they have a hallmark christmas channel <coughs> no not allowed hallmark's gone too far <laughs> so yeah, no, 17. One is an urban Christmas channel. Not allowed. Another one is, I, I told her, I'm like, well, they do have one Spanish-speaking Christmas channel. That might be fun. But no, I, I, it's just it's amazing. And, you know, like, yeah, half of them were only on the app. So counting the app ones, does Sirius have like 400 channels now or what? I'm not sure. They have a ton. I mean, Mike, you were featured on their on their on their hits show, so I mean, you you know more about Sirius XM than anybody else. I mean, you were what liked by Facebook uh, by their hits channel, bro. I don't know what's going on here, but I'm I got some serious choppiness happening on my end. Oh, okay. I, I've been seeing it too. You have? Well, that's not good. I don't know choppiness well that's no good let's close a few things down 
some some high taskbar things. You know, I I know it's the holiday season and everyone is streaming movies from the Hallmark Channel. You know, the Hallmark app in mm-hmm. in in your house. So <laughs> yeah. That is not a lie, unfortunately. So let's Kim see is here. telling me I look like a '70s porn star <laughs> because my mustache is going back to being out of control again. I'm wearing my Christmas outfit because this is the last show we're going to do before Christmas. Yeah, that's true. It is the last show before Christmas. Colin has his Christmas shirt on. I see. Yeah, and he's got more of his a... Kwanzaa yeah. shirt. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully. All right. I'm, I'm that, that that seems better now. Okay, good. Well, okay. It, so as far as Sirius XM, I I don't know why they have so many damn Christmas channels. I mean, it's one. You know, you only need one, maybe two. Maybe agree, you agree. have the you you have the the classic Christmas songs, and then you have the modern Christmas songs. Yeah. So maybe you have Holly and Mistletoe or Jingle something. and Bell. And, and maybe a third, and maybe a third of just Trans Siberian Orchestra twenty four seven. Actually, there is a Trans Siberian Orchestra channel. That oh, is nice. just Trans Siberian Orchestra, Colin. So they listened and they they did what you wanted. I was just saying th- that one makes sense. <laughs> Only in Colin's world does it make sense. I don't I don't see where it makes sense, but no. it's just me. Well, it, it makes sense more sense than going to see two different Trans Siberian Orchestra concerts in the same year, just so you can see both the East Coast and the West Coast version. If I did that anyway. That... You know, I th- I don't think either one of us has any any response to that. Uh, no. To be completely honest with you, Colin, I'm not. I don't I don't know how to respond to that. What are you drinking? Yeah, what are you drinking tonight? Uh, Root of all evil. It's uh, ginger meat. I I got a gripe with ginger. Um, oh, okay. Well, there's a theme going here because my drink tonight is ginger whiskey with ginger ale. Okay. So I fully intended on drinking a uh, Moscow M- M- Mule Shine tonight. Okay. Now that is a Moscow Mule, but instead of vodka with moonshine. Uh, except for I tried it last night, as I typically do. I, I do a taste run, taste test run, and I about vomited because, as it turns out, I don't like ginger beer, and that's a main component. <laughs> well, that is definitely one thing that we do not agree on there, Shaggy. Uh, ginger in any form is wonderful. My my wife yeah. asked me, she said, well, how did you like your Moscow Mule? I said, you know what? It's pretty sad when the moonshine is the part that I prefer. So next time you should try having a, a Potter Mule, which okay. is butter beer and moonshine. I see. I think my daughter would like that. I'm not sure I would. I don't know what butter okay, beer so even is. I just know they... Do both of you have rum? Ah, always have rum. Unless the rum's gone. What kind okay, of rum? Okay, so for next, <laughs> for next, for the next episode of PTR, we'll do the hot buttered rum recipe that I've been um, okay. threatening for now, months. Now, but the question is, okay, is this like white clear rum? Is it spiced rum? Is it dark rum? Is it, you know, what? Th- there are different kinds of rum. Yes, I for this for this recipe, I will leave it up to you to decide what is your favorite rum. <laughs> That's not the way recipes I'm work. Probably, I probably will be using Myers. That so still Myers does is a dark rum. <laughs> yes, well, that, Myers that, is a dark the, rum. Okay. Yes, that I that I remember from bartending school, and according to according to Kim, you're fine live. So the the the. Oh, I, was only to us. Oh, apparently. okay. Well, um, 
All right. Good so, to know. Yeah. So, uh, well, as yeah, I always have to remember, I, 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 I never know if it's on my end. When Colin said he was getting it too, because if Dropbox is syncing up, especially now, since Butterstown is so busy, oh. he's constantly editing her files and stuff. And if it's trying to sync, it's like, yeah, that's a no good. Yeah, that's a that's a no bueno. No. Okay. By the way, the toy's up and running for you if you want now. You lie. No. Oh no, you don't. He's up now. Okay. He's yes, up see now. There, she says uh, he's he's a good now. He's he's, he's a bite to me. <laughs> With all this no, Italian yeah, talk, yeah. we should play, you know, Dominic the Italian donkey. <laughs> but then we get another copyright violation. I would and apparently. Yes. So, uh, talking That's about basically podcast. her saying, I'm going to keep working and you can just suck it up. That's it. <laughs> Tuck Tuki is code for suck it up buttercup. So I, I've actually been surprised that Shaggy hasn't uh, taken us down the path of trying to sign up for an Audible's podcast. Well, uh, actually, funny enough, so we could, we we get a, I get at least one email a week from Libsyn, our content distributor, that says, hey, you should be on Spotify. Spotify is the new home of all podcasts, except mm -hmm. you know, and they're and now I think they also have Audible subscription. I think that you can distribute distribute to Audible as well. The problem is everywhere in those terms it says if you play one second of copyrighted music, we're gonna take your firstborn, uh, you know, and then we're <laughs> gonna then we're gonna stake you up and burn you in front of them, uh, you know. So they kind of scare me. All right, it's not like. It's yeah. not like YouTube where they go, hey, you're bad. You played something that somebody else owns, so yeah. we're just going to give them a little bit of money. Uh, you know, Or or nobody else is going to be able to see your video. Yeah, sorry. Or Blackistan won't be able to see your video, but everybody else in the world can. Well, the entire world couldn't see our one video because... Ron Swanson decided he was going to get a, a short and curly up his butt. Yeah. We're, we're advocating against vegan bacon, and he's the best person to do it. And all of a sudden, oh, doesn't want to be an advocate for us. Well, apparently, <laughs> we can't get too drunk anymore either, because if we start to sound like Bob Dylan, Universal Media Group is going to come after us and say, and you can't, well, you can't be playing that song on the radio. Who knew? Uh, well, where the priest on the roller coaster opens his eyes, his Titanic starts to rise. So I order a side of chili fries with a four year old hunchback sword swallower with 13 eyes in my mind. Thank you, Bob Dylan. Every song have you, ever. Have you ever actually heard Bob Dylan live in a concert? I don't think I've heard Bob Dylan speak. I didn't know Bob Dylan was alive. But it was a fictional character. He just sold all his music. But no, many, it was quite a while back, but uh, me and uh, I think was, I went with Kate. And anyway, it was a double header. It was a concert with both um, uh, Paul Simon and Bob Dylan. Oh, well, uh, well, I'm sure there was cocaine and, running rampant there to stay awake. Good Lord. And Geritol. Well, and, well, they, and they, they, when they, I say they, that, they their own needs for them. So we got through the first half of of the concert, which was great. And then there was this part in the middle where they sang together, and that was okay. And then it was the Bob Dylan part of the concert, and we realized that the worst singer in the world of Bob Dylan songs is probably Bob Dylan. He did not know any of the words, or actually any of the tunes because the songs were unrecognizable so we just decided to leave now he was I, singing just to be tambourine man, it did not sound like right. mr tambourine man just just so to like, be clear yep my comment about needing cocaine to stay awake was not reflective of the audience it was reflective of my opinion of the music because the two of them are two of the most mellow record collections or, or song catalogs that I can think of. Yeah. 
I don't want I don't oh. want somebody I don't want to, I don't want anybody hating me again. <laughs> so I'm just saying, if we actually had Paul Simon on here and he's saying one of his not Paul Simon, if we had Bob, Bob Dylan, Dylan on PTR Radio and he's saying one of his songs. I doubt Universal would be able to do a content match because they would not recognize well, what song it was. <laughs> I, if we had Bob Dylan on it, no, they would know Bob Dylan was on here because I'm telling every freaking person in the world that <laughs> I did a radio show with Bob Dylan. You know what? At that point, everybody at work, yeah, you want to know, you want to hear something cool? I did a show with Bob Dylan. Go ahead. It would replace the show with Sally Graziano as my most talked about show, my yeah. most favorite guest. You know, yeah. The Nobel, Pri the Nobel Prize Committee couldn't find him, but we got him on PTR. That that, that would be our. Uh... <laughs> that would be something. That would be something. All right. Uh... <laughs> All right. <laughs> Speaking about uh, things that are so bizarre but yet true, um, let's talk about Israel. We don't really give them enough, you know, uh, microphone time on the show. I know that, you know, Colin wants to bring them up constantly, and, and Mike, you and I shut him down all the time. But, uh, you know, uh, one thing you never hear from, the Israeli Space Agency. Uh, partially because they didn't, didn't even know they had one. I was going to say, I didn't even know they had one. Uh, but but evidently, they, they do. And yes, and they're more advanced than any of us. Why? Mm-hmm. Because they are part of the Galactic Federation. This yeah. is not a joke, people. No. Or at least they th them thinking that they're part of the Galactic Federation is not a joke. At least well, according to one man. Yeah. <laughs> he can confirm the existence of aliens because he claims they have been among us for a damn long time. Boy, that's a weird quote to get from a scientist. How long have they been here? Damn long time. Damn long time. That's scientific measurement. He even okay, says they it? have their own org, the Galactic Federation. Not only that, but uh, he alleges President Trump was about to blow the lid off the whole thing recently, but he was convinced to shut his trap because most humans weren't ready for the truth yet. I want to meet the man who was able to keep Donald Trump quiet about anything. All right, so I missed the part or didn't read far enough to see that Donald Trump somehow was mentioned in this article, but now it's all starting to make sense. Um, <laughs> they gave up on every other possible conspiracy theory about why he lost the election, so he pulled a Spielberg and just said, aliens, people. <laughs> and So... <laughs> Here's the here's the irony about this, okay? This really does sound like the plot from Men in Black when you think about it. And that was on quite a few times this weekend. Where there's they've been living among us and we don't even know, nobody even knows it. Of course they don't because the neuralizer yeah. is making sure that nobody knows. But and again, you know, I've already got one entire nation that hates me. Let's let's go let's see if we can go two for two. What the hell is Israel got? Mike that the rest of the planet doesn't have I, that that's the one country that the aliens are like hmm, let's go there i i want to ask a question mike of you and colin when i say alien abduction and experimentation what type of person comes to mind someone who believes that aliens have come to our flat earth <laughs> okay <laughs> All right. If you could create, all right, in words, a picture of this person that says, I was experimented on. Okay, Florida man. So we're thinking um, beer belly, uh, pickup truck, um, ripped t shirt, uh, proudly has flags on his truck, and probably hand drawn bumper stickers, is, is what I'm thinking. All right. Now here's. Here's what here's what clinches it for me. According to the 87-year-old Israeli scientist, there is an agreement between the U.S. government and the aliens. They signed a contract with us to do experiments here. They, too, are researching and trying to understand the whole fabric of the universe 
and they want us as helpers. I I wish I could tell you what you said. <laughs> why well, helpers? But uh, why choose those people? Those people can barely get out of Walmart. Those people think well, it's like it's only happening. It's only happening to us again. Oh, okay. Sorry. I don't know why. Here, I'm going to stop doing this. All right. That should <laughs> drastically change things. I would hope. Colin, are you in, are are you are you getting this? What what are you doing? No, that one was fine. I, I didn't hear anything from. I, I didn't hear any. It must be me. Issues. That there. must be you. <laughs> I don't know. So anyway, to, to reiterate, they signed a contract with us to do experiments here. They are researching and trying to understand the whole fabric of the universe, and they want us as helpers. In what world does that make sense? I don't know. Try it again. All right. I, I, I just did see a jump cut on you, Mike. That was a well, very yeah, because I, I got a, a the host unable to connect the host, so I don't know if it's hmm. I don't know if it's you or me. I don't know. Colin didn't jump cut, but I, don't I know. didn't. Yeah, I didn't. It was, I didn't see any problems. All right. Okay. So it uh, it is officially me. All right. So so aliens, Mike. Give me your thought. Aliens. I don't. I still don't understand what Israel has that nobody else does. That would make the aliens want to be there. No, it's it's not that they're there, Mike. It's that Israel just isn't afraid to tell the truth. Oh well, that that's that's it's, their own problem. It's not that they 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 have a secret base in Israel. It's that you know the Israeli government, as part of this cabal, uh, you know, uh -oh, the cabal, of course, a cabal, yeah. Sure. According to this article from TMZ, Obama all but confirmed the existence of aliens himself, but wasn't as loose-lipped as this Israeli scientist. I, I, I don't yeah. remember that as part of his book, but it could have been. I don't recall. <laughs> but you know what? It does. It kind of makes sense now because maybe... Maybe it explains why. Or he, I always thought that his children might be a little bit of an alien mix. Like Michelle Obama, she could be an alien. What? In the same sense that Oprah is an alien. What if Men in Black was wasn't lying? Uh, think about it. Well, I think that I, I definitely think that you know Oprah alien makes sense. I don't know that many people that ping pong on weight that much. So, you know, it's got to be. But, uh, you know, I don't, I don't know about Michelle Obama. Well, I, I think Illum the Illuminati is code for alien. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Could be, I guess. <laughs> All right. Oh, all right, Mike. We're going to go on to another bright idea of yours, we sh or something we else do of mine. Yes, something else that you pointed out that that also proves it's yet another thing of why, uh, if you want to pick the smartest, you know, entity, don't choose human beings. There's Correct. a hidden danger lurking in your house, Mike. Yes, one that and nobody it's... recognizes. Except for now. So let's let's be real clear about this, folks. The 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 number one seller of Chinese goods in America is Dollar Tree, or I'll say Dollar Stores in general. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. when they have to recall an item from a Dollar Tree, you think, well. What could that item be? Maybe it's a food stuff. Maybe it's, you know, crayons or paints that have lead in them. Who knows? 
maybe maybe the, the, the fake Tupperware has BPA in it. You don't know. No. This particular item is being recalled because it's a fire hazard. Folks, it's a candle. It is a candle, scented candle, that is being recalled because it's a fire hazard. So, so let's let that thing sink in. So, the thing you purchase to light on fire to make your house smell good, they had to recall because it might catch on fire when you light it on fire as its intended use. Well, not just that it might catch on fire, it's way too good at catching on fire. That's it's, the problem. The candle is excellent at catching on fire. Well, I think what Colin yeah. is saying is it they is. put too much of combustible ingredients into the wax mixture. Therefore, a tiny little flame could flare up into the size of the human torch. So we need a less combustible candle is what you're saying. What we need. Now, what is, so yeah. on, the, on a candle, the wick is supposed to be lit. So mm -hmm. they're saying on these particular candles, the wax itself catches on fire. Uh, all right. and if the oh, wax itself I got on a, fire, a less combustible candle. This that's a candle that won't light. It's very hard to light this candle. Are you going to prove this to us? Because there's no wick and there's no wax. Very hard. This is a sucky candle. That's why it's a box of Scooby Snacks. I was going to say you just wanted to show off that you had Scooby Snacks. That's all. No, I just couldn't <laughs> find anything else that wasn't old man. It was either going to be that or it was a look. These probiotic gummies. This is not a candle. Uh, you know, but. Beard balm. This is wax, but it's not a candle. <laughs> yes. And if you tried to light it, it probably wouldn't. Would yeah, so, beard balm yeah, light on fire? Should not, candles, the wick should be on fire. The candle should not be on fire because then the candle breaks and then you burn your house down. So that's what we get with these. Cheap foreign candles. We get, yeah. So, so don't light your candle on fire. That's what we're coming away with this at. We're going to be smart about this if there is such a thing. <laughs> so, <laughs> we're, we're doing a science okay. lesson. Will beard balm light on fire? Let's see. We're going to put some beard balm on something else and light it, not the tin itself? Yeah. Correct. So, this put... reminds me of a moment over yeah. a year ago. It's on. Um, it's on something that's metal. Okay. <laughs> that metal is going to heat up very quickly. No, it just it. Uh -oh, no, okay. it doesn't light on fire. It just instantly melts. That's all. Okay, okay. as so. expected. All right. Yeah. Come on. So, I, I was just going to say it reminds me of a scenario where the words "hot, hot, very hot" came out quickly. While well, Colin and I were trying to warm up an uh, MRE and heat it during a taste test. Oh, yes. I remember that. <laughs> and uh, we forgot that uh, chemical reactions that are meant to boil water get very hot and might require oven mitts. Yes. I, I, re I seem to recall that episode. Yeah. Oh, I wish for the video back then because that would have been... Uh, I, thought we, I thought we moment. had video of that, but... No, I don't think we were shooting video at that time. Uh, okay, so what else do we have here? Um, well, why not? Because it's 2020. Uh, apparently, baby names now have to be banned. Because, you know, people can't have common sense not to name their kids stupid shit. Yeah, so, you know, towards the end of the year, we always get the list of, okay, here's the baby names we see being hot next year. Here's what was hot this year. You know, these are the most popular baby names for the decade or whatever. But um, turns out there are some names, much like Elon Musk found out, that you can't put on a birth certificate. 
Uh, and outside are, of the United States. Yeah, outside of the United States. So these are some of these are from uh, around the country. Uh, for example, uh, in France, cannot name your baby Nutella. You know, the hazelnut treat. Uh, also, um, you can't name them phrase, which means strawberry. Uh, and and then also... And that one is because it can be uh, misconstrued as a different slang word. Ah. So they, can't, they said they can't be named that because someone may make fun of their name. Yes. Which is uh, most names. Yeah. Uh, nobody ever mocks anyone because of their name as long as they're not on this list. Uh, you know. Uh, also, cannot, due to childhood mockery, name your child Prince William. Why didn't they just also say Prince Albert? I, well, they didn't have a second choice. Okay. But it, it's, it's in the, the blurb next to it. Their second choice, which was also rejected, was Minnie Cooper. Yeah. Um... In Winnie, Co what the Elon Musk is that you? <laughs> so, B R F F X X C C X X M N P C C C L L M N. No, 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 you're saying you're saying it all wrong. It's pronounced Albin. Really? Uh, there's no A's in this. Um, that, this is per. Okay, so apparently. Um, they, they submitted this baby name to protest a fine they received for failing to register a baby name by the child's fifth birthday. So, five years old, and it's just called child, baby. boy, <laughs> you. And well, because thing one and five thing two old, are already still taken. No name. A child was working for a long time for Disney until they finally gave the baby Yoda an actual name. Yes, uh, Kevin. Yes, that was in uh, Sweden. Also in Sweden, uh, parents had to go to court. Uh, this, this, this is allowed, but they had to go to court to fight to use the names Metallica, Lego, and Elvis. Okay, Elvis, I don't understand because that's actual. That's an actual name. Yeah, the other. Yes, two... that's not a Swedish name. So, in some of those um, um, Nordic countries. The rule is not like in France. It's they don't want your they don't want um, the kids to be um, made fun of. But up in the Nordic countries, they actually require them to be um, names, like ethically correct names. The meaning of the name Elvis in Norse is sage. So yeah. could they so name their child Yaya yeah, yeah, Ding Dong? <laughs> they should. So they won for they won with Elvis because they because they said no, that's actually uh, that, that's a word that uh, we can translate. So therefore, you know, it should be allowed. Except well, here's another one to go along with uh, Metallica and such that you cannot use in Sweden, IKEA. That one you can't use. Well. Of course not, because that's what Sweden is known for, besides their little meatballs. Yeah. And most people only know about the meatballs because you get them at Ikea. Now, also, uh, you know, we're huge fans of Kim and Kanye. I mean, we? They're, they're usually a segment on the show, but because it's Christmas, we ran out of time. Uh, you know, but uh, in New Zealand, uh, their second child's name would not fly. Because New Zealand says you cannot give your children names that resemble official titles. So, therefore, they would have had to come up with a different name for Saint. We called him Sant. Well, it makes sense since the daddy thinks he's God. Uh, so, um, next in New Zealand, you cannot use the Roman numeral three, evidently. At first, when I saw this, I thought, oh, they named their baby ill. But, no, nope, uh, three. Ill would be awesome because then, yes, we were licensed to ill. <laughs> Our dog was licensed to ill. 
Yes, I, he is licensed. Licensed to be. I think they would have allowed. I think they would have allowed ill. Yeah. If they had been yeah, ill, they would have allowed. They would have allowed ill. They would have allowed them to spell out T H R E E. Mm -hmm. No yeah. Roman numerals. Yeah, so they should have just named their baby ill, because traditionally you capitalize the first letter and the second two letters would have been lowercase. And it would have looked like three every time the kid wrote out his yes. name. Um, let's, okay, let's just bounce here a little bit. Um, yeah. Apparently, New Zealand, they tried to name their child, period. Not the word, the dot. <laughs> just the dot. Which they would have pronounced full stop. Yeah. Uh, in uh, oh, in Japan, apparently somebody tried to name their child. It was water and child together, but uh, previous generations used this combination of symbols for stillbirth. Oh. That would be bad. Yeah. And once they told the parents that, they're like, yeah, no, we're not going to fight you. We changed name. Yes. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you. Scrotum. <laughs> Sonora, Mexico. Uh, these names were rejected by the government. Robocop, Facebook, and as Mike, Mike said, Scrotum. Who's going to fight Robocop in the school parking lot? You know? It's not going to happen. What was the what, only? Well, it, with his luck, he'll go to school and there'll be some kid. What was the name of the other thing? MK7200 or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> no. uh, so apparently Tom is bad in Portugal. You can't just name him Tom. You have to name him Tomas and then you call him Tom. You can't use nicknames or alternate spellings. So everything has to be, oh. everybody has to have a Portuguese name and it has to be spelled correctly. Oh my this goodness. Is... So many people couldn't name their child. Do you know how many, like, you know, destinies that end in an I and, you know, Jennifer's with one N or two N or four N's we have? You know, they, oh man, what a world we'd live in. If, Every Chris was CH instead of the, some of them having that stupid K, uh, you know. Yeah. Or yeah. This is, okay, to your point, you know, they're good, they're good yeah. things. You know, there would be Collins out there that would not be um, ridiculed Colin. for having two L's in their name for no reason. Yeah, there wouldn't be an MYK, MYQ, Mike. It'd just be M I K E. So, to to your point. You go a little further down the list. Apparently, in Denmark, parents get a list of 7,000 pre-approved names that they can choose from, or else they have to request permission. Somebody tried to name their child Molly, M-O-L-L-I, and it was rejected because of the I. They also tried to name the other twin Monkey. <laughs> that was rejected for obvious reasons. Well, don't name your child after a, a date okay. rate drug. In the comments here, it also says the country also rejected naming a child anus. Well, that's okay. There's 82 pages of names that have been banned in Portugal, uh, mainly because they're non-Portuguese names. <laughs> For example, Thor, Nirvana, and Paris are included on the list. In Switzerland... Brand names are not allowed, so Mercedes and Chanel cannot be named. Now, my question is, what if, out of spite, someone were to name their child or someone was to start a company named Michael? <laughs> Does that mean that no child could be named Michael ever again? Mm -hmm. <sighs> No, because they probably wouldn't allow that to be used as a name. Appar apparently in Germany, you can't name your child Lucifer. I wonder if you could call him Adolf. No. Definitely well, not. Well, that's okay. In Malaysia, you can't name them anything similar. You're, you're frowned upon naming them anything that sounds like nature, so such as animals or fruits. So no apple or violet or daisy. So nothing flower related either. 
Here, so, uh, there's another one and, and actually, tying us back to aliens. So, in Switzerland, actually, there was actually a, a girl named Harriet because she was born in the UK, but she had dual citizenship. So she tried to get a Icelandic passport, but that they would not not allow her to use the name Harriet. So her passport is uh, Stuka, uh, and which basically is girl. So in her other country of Iceland, her, she's named Girl instead of Harriet. Um, Switzerland. In, check this one out. They they're going back to aliens. Hold, hold on, let Mike go. <laughs> going yeah. back to aliens here. They tried to name their child J, as in Agent J, and it was not allowed. One letter. I oh, don't understand furthermore, this, for is... Icelanders. Do you know the Icelandic alphabet does not have the letter C? Yes. So therefore, there are not any names that start with C in the entire country. Uh, the former mayor of Reykjavik called it an unfair, stupid law against creativity when he wanted to name his daughter Camilla. A mother in Wales thought that naming their child cyanide would be okay because that was the drug that killed Hitler. Therefore, it had a positive aura around it. Naming your child after a poison, there is no positive spin to that. <laughs> no. Germany rejects last names used as first names. So, therefore, when a couple tried to register their child as first name of Schmitz, they were told no. Okay, so there's a couple in here that are from the states. Um, some of them were like, you can't have numbers. Um, Jose is, is technically an issue in California because he can't have the mark, but they're trying to fix that. But the best one here is from Hawaii. So someone was named Talula Does the Hulu. And when she was nine years old, she complained about it. She wanted her name changed. She went to family court, and her parents lost custody of her because the judge was so profoundly concerned about their poor judgment. Well, that makes sense. So, I, yeah, I'm uh, going to her, so Okay, she, wait she, a minute. No, 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 no. Yeah. This actually was in New Zealand, Colin. This was not the States. The full name of the girl was Tallulah Does the Hula from Hawaii. That was her full name. Oh, I see what you're saying. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I got this wrong. I thought it was New I saw New Zealand there, and I thought that the name was... Okay, got it. But that makes it even more Still. absurd. Yes. A girl in New Zealand named when Tallulah Does the Hulu from Hawaii. That, Yes. It, it, it's 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 so bad it was unable to be understood the first time I read it. Now, I would assume that the parents ended up getting um, got her getting her back at some point after that, but at, but they did. She got a guardianship arranged so she could legally change her name. But I don't know what what happened after that. That's uh, that was in two thousand eight. And I guess we can just go ahead and say, we'll, we'll, we'll mention it one time, that today the Electoral College officially certified that Joe Biden won the election. That's right. They yep. did. So let, let, that is all the politics I want to talk about today, but that's well, not going to happen because we also have our favorite orange Oompa Loompa doing something that... I don't know where the hell this came from, but he signed an executive order that makes Christmas Eve a federal holiday this year. Mm -hmm. He signs this like literally what, like th less than 30 days from the day. The logistics of this, this is why all this is why like the post office is scrambling now saying, 
no, you got to get your cards in the mail by tomorrow because uh, we're not going to be here on Christmas Eve now. Um, One of the busiest days for sending for uh, for the post office, I'm sure. Yeah. I well, mean, this is. Yeah, but okay, this brings so, up the timing is horrible. Brings, we'll, we'll we'll all agree the timing is horrible. This should have went into effect 2021. Um, okay. Now, okay, so let's let's is regardless of timing, is making Christmas Eve a federal holiday, good or bad? Let's just uh, let's just I, answer that question. Is it is it a good idea, or bad idea? We only I, have. I, 10, if, I think if, it's 10, 10 federal holidays. Okay, so if my choices are only good or bad, now I'm kind of in the minority here because I have never held a federal job. Right? I've never been in, so this would never have an effect on me. But I don't understand why all of a sudden. Yeah, I, I agree. Well, I know why all of a sudden. But anyway, we, but we're not no going to get into that. Not much gets well, done, except for, like Mike said, the post office. There's a, there's a few things that actually yeah. get done. I'm sure that the the Internal Revenue Service starts gearing up, and, and you know, there's other things that start getting done. But um, right now, the 10 federal holidays, for those of you that maybe aren't in the U.S., New Year's mm -hmm. Day, uh, Martin Luther King Jr.'s birthday, President's Day, uh, Memorial Day, Independence Day, Labor Day, Columbus Day, Veterans Day, Thanksgiving, Christmas and now Christmas Eve. Okay, so those are the those are the federal holidays. Now, not all companies take off all those federal holidays. Obviously, there's tons of places that are open on a lot of those days. So just because it's federal doesn't mean that even state state governments close on those days. Uh, you know, it is no, but here's typically but it, that they do. It is a safe bet that if it's a federal <laughs> holiday, that it's going to become a bank holiday. Yes, which but means that's, that could cause issues, though, because banks can't be closed for three days simultaneously in a row. Correct. So you know, considering that that's two days, <laughs> Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. Now, depending upon how the calendar lines up, if you were to make say. You know, the following day, the day after Christmas, a Sunday, that right. could create an issue. I was thinking from like the stock market, like, so is Wall Street going to shut down now? That's a good question. I don't know well, if see, Wall here, Street closes on all federal holidays or not. But here's the problem. See, so they're also called bank holidays, those are the ones where like Wall Street shuts down and stuff. And in much of the world, Christmas is a two-day banking holiday. So yes. this is not anything weird. The problem is, is that if not Christmas Eve, it's the day after Christmas, otherwise known as Boxing Day. Yeah. So a lot of the rest of the world, especially Canada, United Kingdom, uh, Bahamas, Nigeria, South Africa, Australia, New Zealand, they all have a banking holiday where they shut down the day after Christmas. So mm -hmm. if we match them and say the day after Christmas is a holiday, that would make sense. We, that would bring us in line with a lot of the other big stock markets. By the way, other than Veterans Day, in Indigenous Peoples Day, and Good Friday, the New York Stock Exchange and the NASDAQ exchanges follow the federal government's holiday schedule for closings. So the answer is right. yes. So they would fall in line with this change. If they were to follow typical. So, and it's quite possible they're not going to do it this year and fall in line next year. I don't understand how, does he have the authority to do this? That's the other question. To make oh. this a federal holiday. I mean, or is this but, a federal holiday in the sense of like how 9-11 became by the way, I should mention for full transparency that the stock market does close early. They have a partial holiday on Black Friday and Christmas Eve already. Yeah. I think this executive order just tells federal employees not to come in. Well, it does, but it doesn't, actually. 
Um, all executive departments and agencies of the federal government shall be closed and their employees excused from duty on Thursday the 24th, 2020, the day before Christmas. The executive order does make an exception, however, for the heads of executive departments and agencies who may determine that certain offices and installations of the organization or parts thereof must remain open. So it's not a blanket everybody. Just like everything else, right. for reasons of national security, defense, or public need, other of the offices may remain open. Um, you know, this effectively creates a four-day weekend uh, to celebrate the holiday on, on this Christmas Eve. Um, you know, uh, it was previously thought the president would give federal employees a half a day off on Thursday, as that was what President Obama and President Clinton did when Christmas Eve, when Christmas fell on a Friday. So there is, to some degree, a uh, a, a standing order for this, but not the entire day. And actually. Uh, you know, they didn't create it as a perpetual holiday. Okay, you know? so oh. this was a one-time thing, parting gift kind of thing. Well, uh, the, this this uh, apparently is just standard practice. Yeah, it, it it it. So I'm not even sure why this is getting any coverage in the news. Because what is the, re, you got to ask that question? No, I'm just saying. <laughs> This is not even worth talking about. This is just Christmas is on Saturday, so we're so we're also we're getting Friday. Yeah. Well, no, Christmas for... is on Friday. Hmm? The twenty fifth is a Friday. Okay. Maybe Traditionally, I'm... yes. If if the holiday oh, is okay. on a weekend, then we get the previous work day off. But this okay. is exactly. Christmas is on a Friday. Okay. I know what this is then? This article yeah. I just read. So. But what Colin is saying is traditionally, yes, if the if there is a, a federal holiday on, say, a Saturday, then we get the preceding Friday off. That now, is correct. He he has also um apparently he did this in twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen as well. Yes. So it is kind of common practice for him. But then everybody's also asking if it's that easy for him to just sign an executive order to make something a federal holiday. Why didn't he make election day a federal holiday? That's, that's the big, that's, yeah, that's, that's, that's the, that's the big bookend to this, right? Which there yeah. has been a growing movement, uh, among some to make that, you know, everybody, normally we always complain about voter turnout, right? That compared to other countries, which have democracy, we have a traditionally low voter turnout as a percentage of our population. Right. And they said, well, one of the reasons why is because in those other countries, Election Day is a holiday. Right. They 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 realize the significance of Election Day and they want to promote citizen involvement in Election Day. And so therefore they make it a holiday so that their citizens have the ability to vote. And everyone has said, well, why shouldn't the U.S. do the same thing if we're truly excited and and involved and we want participation from our citizens? And. Uh, it really, really aggravates me when people talk about the record voter turnout this year and how both candidates received a record number of votes and we had the largest participation. Okay, this is true. I, I'm not going to deny that. But it's also because how many states forced – Mail-in voting, a lot of people were like, oh, I'm not going to do vote, vote, vote by mail because I got it, it's too much of a hassle for me to register this, that, the other thing. New Jersey, you didn't have a choice. We had record turnouts in Jersey because every single registered voter had to vote by mail. Well, well, now, when you say had to vote, they didn't have to turn it in. They could have just well, thrown it in the trash. They, true. They, that now, is true. They did enable, right. they, they mass-enabled a larger population to take part in the process and made it easier for people to take part in the process. Now, um, th okay, that is my point, and I do agree with it. What I don't agree with is when folks say there was the largest turnout ever in part because of one of the candidates. Mm -hmm. No. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, that's not the situation at all. It Make something easy, people will do it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes. Now that doesn't necessarily exactly. mean that it is more. I, I'm not going to go down the rabbit hole of saying it's more. It's a higher potential for fraud because you made it easy. No, not necessarily. I'm not going to say yes or no to that. I'm going to say 
if you want people to be involved, make it easy. Um, we've been complaining for years that we don't have the voter turnout, all right, that people aren't involved in their democracy. So we saw what happened when we made it easier for people to get involved. I'm yes. not going to say whether the result was the way that you wanted it or the way that you didn't want it. You cannot bitch that people got involved about it. All right. Nobody should complain that more people turned out or more more people, you know, cast mm -hmm. a vote, you know, because that's what we're supposed yeah. to do. We're supposed to give a damn. Yes. You know, and I, and I mean, yes, that can rock the boat of what the norm has been for sure. That can change things, because when you suddenly have people involved that have not historically been involved, it's going to shake things up. And whether that's my, for right or wrong. My other concern is that because it was such a high turnout, people are going to say that this should be the norm from now on. And many, many folks are, are not going to stand for that. I think in the years when it is not a presidential election, you know, like next year, when pretty much you're voting for your local, maybe Congress, maybe... In, in off years when it is non-presidential, I do not think that vote by mail makes is going to be as – you're not going to have as much of a turnout as you did for a presidential election. That's well, always been the case, and yeah, I think it will still be the case. I agree, I, I, you're, and you're absolutely right. When people, the stakes aren't as high, more, yeah, people, people will be care. more – more apt to take that ballot and throw it in the trash if it is not a presidential election. Yeah, which is a shame because in reality, change happens at the local level more so than at the national level. If people really are honest about it, your local elections matter more to you personally than anything at the top. You know, just when you look at yeah. your circle of influence, that's also where your vote matters the most it's because there's a much smaller pool. So... To Mike's point, I would say don't become, uh, you know, uh, disenchanted with the voting process just because it's not for the major offices. All right. Again, that's where I think it, it matters more. And you guys can correct me if I'm wrong here, but I think that, that that's true. Well, I, I think if we keep the same level of access to vote by mail, and it is easy for people to vote by mail. I'm going to be interested to see what the voting turnout is going to be in two years. It, if you make it a choice. Yeah. Don't, now, I don't know if it, how it was in Illinois. In New Jersey, it was mandatory. The exception was if you were, if you were disabled, you were allowed to go and vote at the poll, which doesn't make any sense. And that was yeah. a big bone of contention here. Like, yeah. okay, so somebody in a wheelchair can go and vote at the poll, but... Some, or somebody that has health issues can go and vote at the at the voting booth, but everybody else can't. If you don't make it mandatory, that's that's where I think the the big distinction is going to be. Yeah, and I think I don't know if anybody else made it mandatory. I, I think just giving people that option, making sure that more people are aware of that option, making it making it a, a method by which is is more normal. Because I will say, before this year. I don't remember anyone, you know, highly talking up the vote by mail option, the absentee ballot option. Uh, you know, I don't I don't remember people bringing that up as, hey, this is an alternative to getting to going to the to the polling place. Um, you know, I think if we continue to see that as a viable option again, Mike, now in your situation is probably a little bit different where it was forced on everybody because nobody likes that at all. Um, you know, but if we continue to see that as an option, hopefully we'll still see a larger percentage of people being involved in it. And I don't think that's ever a bad thing. Okay. More people having a say, so I don't think can ever oh, be bad. I, oh no, I agree. I, I absolutely agree that the more people that are involved with the process, the, the, the better the process works. I mean, as far as representing the people, I, I'm all for that. Yeah. Which made me a little bit upset. I guess we will, I will take a slight, um, did anyone see, the story about the Georgia representative who wants to introduce a constitutional amendment in Georgia to essentially remove the citizen vote and make it a legislature vote for president. 
That there's a lot of I, stupid stuff going on right now. It's, it's I, mean, I know, but this one, you know, and normally this one I would say is is r ridiculous speculation by some you know wackadoo person in charge. But as I read it, this was actually the president of the Senate. Yeah. Oh, I know, I'm just saying. There are. I mean, you go to the sec the attorney general in Texas who wants to secede from the union. I mean, you you have high level craziness going across the the nation here. I mean, it, it it's just it is just rampant craziness. Yeah. All of their stories that the Texas guy is probably just trying to get a pardon. Um, <laughs> back to your question, which we didn't answer, Mike. Um, in Illinois we had the choice of mail-in voting, early voting, or voting on the day. There was nothing. Uh, okay. We were not a state that, get, that had, well, I guess, um, yeah, I guess we did get automatic mail-in ballot applications. Applications. Yes, sent we got in. applications okay. sent to everyone. Yeah. We, but not... we didn't get applications. We got mail-in ballots, period. Right. In well, fact, was, they uh, even uh, shut uh, down. Uh, they shut down many of the polling sites because they they weren't needed. So they consolidated. Like normally, we have I'm going to say twelve in my town. I'm probably, I could be wrong, but we only had four. So that was uh, Vermont, New Jersey, Washington D.C., uh, Montana, but there was a per county opt in on that. Uh, Colorado, Utah, Nevada. California, Oregon, Washington, and Hawaii. Those were all the states that just aut that automatically sent ballots out. I don't know about those other states if it was mandatory that you had to use the ballot, but those were the states that did that. I don't think they could make it mandatory that you could use the ballot, but they would th proactively send it out. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't think we have any it's laws on the books that say you must vote. <laughs> Apparently, yes, 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 yes. yes. Um, the only the only states that required an excuse to do a mail in ballot was Texas, uh, Louisiana, Mississippi, Tennessee, and Indiana. Right. Uh, and the only swing one that did the the automatic ballots was uh, Nevada. Yeah. Oh, it, it's just anyway. Yeah, I'm to see. Yeah. It's going to be interesting in two years to see if the full access to mail-in voting be, continues, or do we have a whole bunch of states deciding no because our candidate lost, or yes because our candidate won. I don't know. Well, it's going to be that's it. yeah that's going to be that's going to be a big uh, that's going to be a big question. Like I know I know for a fact in New Jersey that Governor Murphy. Is going to pu he's going to pu push to. I shouldn't say for a fact. It is my strong opinion that he is going to push to do mail-in ballots permanently, because, and listen, I have seen all every version, every spin of the conspiracy theory about mail-in voting here. I do know for a fact that there was an issue with provisional ballots in the last local election because the bags at the polling locations were not sealed. Therefore, provisional ballots were not counted. They were disqualified. So there is a whole consp – our town has every right to question elections at this point because there's actual lawsuits going on as a result of the, the last mayoral election. I do not see it going well. And to be completely honest with you, I think he's flubbing up so much with the way he's handling the, the, the pandemic that as far as lockdowns and businesses getting closed and what have you, and just his general handling of trying to keep the spread minimal, I don't see him getting reelected. Yeah, but. I think – I think anyone who is in a, in a position right now where they are 
um, you know, making the shots as far as what business is open, what business is closed, what, what activities are available, what aren't. I, they are in an enviable position because no matter, you know, I'm going to be completely honest, no matter what they do, they are going to be wrong. Uh, I, there so, is no right course of action because no. they're, they're, they're not going to make every, you cannot make everyone happy with this. All right. And, and they are going to live with whatever the political repercussions or anything are, you know, with, with their decisions. Trust me, I have seen some of the toil that it's taken on just the legislators here about, you know, what's going on. And it's, it's pretty, you know, graphic. You know, you see those pictures of like presidents when they start their term versus when they end their term and how rough they how how much it aged them. And I think we can get some of those, you know, for the pandemic as well, because some people aren't, uh, you know, this this is hard on people. And so, you know, yeah, I, trust me, I wouldn't want to be in their position, which is one of many reasons why I never go into politics. So I just sent the link to you guys, and I, I'm not surprised by the announcement. I'm surprised by the timing of the announcement that uh, Attorney General Barr is resigning and will be vacating the office before Christmas. I'm not surprised. Yeah, that, all, yeah, that was about a year, an hour or so before the show started, yeah. yeah. Oh, I, I, it just popped up in my timeline. Uh, I guess I don't follow oh, I just, a whole lot here. I, I, was but I, I also saw time. that yeah. – I also saw that um, – Apparently, there is a growing case to recall Governor Newsom out in California. And, Shaggy, this ties directly to what you were saying as far as how he has handled this lockdown. I think the two things that are really fueling it right now, one, when he was telling his constituents in California to stay home and avoid social gatherings, he was caught out having dinner with his family and friends. Mm-hmm. The other is yeah. a video that went viral last week of a small business that spent a ton of money to set up an outdoor dining area in accordance with the governor's orders to, and then be told that it was going to be shut down. Meanwhile, 50 feet away in the parking lot, Hollywood movie set craft services with the exact same setup was being set up to go into operation that day. So yeah. Yeah. she was being given the message that her outdoor seating was dangerous, but craft services tents were not. Oh, yeah. And I and think even though I get the behind-the-scenes part where the, the there's a lot more testing going on and a lot more isolation and quarantining and controlled contact on a movie set, because that's the way the regulations are set up. I get that. But perception is 90%. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and don't, he, don't get us wrong. We're, we're, not, we're definitely not defending all the, the, the politicians and everything. We're saying that they're doing everything right. Because trust me, we're not. Um, you know, but we're also you know, not saying that the business, some of the businesses are doing everything right. Uh, there was a business here locally that, you know, flagrantly, you know, you know, put up on Facebook, hey, we're not paying attention to what the mayor is saying. We're not paying attention to what the governor is saying. We're going to do it our way anyway. And then was shocked and appalled when their food handling license was pulled, they, when, their, when their health you know, certificate was yanked. And then they went and they, they took them to court like five times and lost every single time. And then they had the gall to put out their well, he's being a big meanie, and so now we have to close forever. No, you were given multiple opportunities. Uh, you know, not that being yeah. a small business is easy nowadays. I actually saw a restaurant opening, like like starting their business, and I thought, yeah. what is wrong with you? This is not a good time to open a restaurant. This is yeah. the worst time. Well, when you think about it. Actually, if you open under these conditions and pretty much you, you do limited hours and it's pretty much, let's just say, like a family-run business, right? So mm -hmm. you stay open for breakfast and lunch or lunch and dinner. You know, yeah. you, don't, you, you don't do a full, you know, 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. day. It's, it might not be a bad idea. The interest rates are so low that 
you can you could get startup capital a lot cheaper. You know, the cost of money is lower right now. Let's be honest. There are all kinds yep. of grants and and what have you that you could probably sneak in and get as far as small business opportunities due to COVID. And you you know the environment you're in. You're not adapting to something. I guess. If anything, you're going to ramp up once restrictions are lifted. So you can manage your expense. Like a restaurant opening up and you start to get your name out there because you're only doing takeout and curbside during COVID. And guess what? You're offering a great value. You get your name out there. People are going to remember that. And when you do open up, they're going to want to – they want to come, come see you, come meet you, come sit and support you. I guess one thing they did around here. I'm not sure about New Jersey, but uh, around here, they made a modification to the liquor licenses that basically said, <laughs> "Oh, you want to make tails? Well, you can come and get your food to go, and take your cocktail too." Yeah, cocktails to go. Yes. drive through yes. bars. So they did that. Um. It's not really publicized as much anymore because people realized it was actually more of a pain in the ass. A lot of the restaurants that I saw that were doing it were, it was more that they were doing, um, it was like the ethnic restaurants, like they were doing pictures of sangria to go. Mm -hmm. And they were just putting them in like two quart containers, like, like Chinese food containers, right? Mm -hmm. The problem was when people were coming to pick them up, there was no easy way to transport them. So I think a lot of the places just said, you know what, it's not. We're getting too many complaints. It's not worth it. Yeah. Um, a lot of places around here are brew pubs, so they already have so, growlers and stuff. So it's funny you talk about that. So there was a couple of things. First was uh, a lot of these bars slash restaurant that that serve food, they would only sell like package goods, like bottles and cans <laughs> that they would normally serve at the bar. They would sell that to go if you ordered food. <laughs> The growlers, I don't know how it is there, but in New Jersey, you, they are only allowed to fill a growler that has their logo on it. So in other words, you have to buy the growler from the brew pub initially, and then they can refill it. You can't take one from, say, brew pub A, and then take it to brew pub B and have them refill it. They can't legally do that. Which I think I is kind of silly, but yeah. yeah, I don't think we have a law on that. It, it does feel like not the you know common courtesy to take a different brew pub's growler to another one and have it filled there. But I think well, you can it's actually not, it's just not, buy your own growlers and have no well, logo on it and filled too. Yeah, and here, Let's see, Jersey, Illinois. Jersey, you can't do that. You can't the the way the law is written. You can't buy a growler from. You know, just a generic growler and bring it and have it filled. It has to have their logo on it. Now, I suppose someone who wants to, who thinks that they're a business, uh, could possibly cut out the the brew pub's logo out of vinyl on their cre cut and slap it on a generic logo and say, "Here you go." You know, slap it on a generic growler. Um, the one brew pub by us actually started doing what they called crowlers where they were 32 ounce cans that they could fill on the spot, which I thought was pretty neat. Hmm. Apparently we have an offer to buy followers on Twitch. Yeah. I, I, I don't, th they're going to buy some of our followers. Well, I don't know that we have that many to sell, but you know, depending upon what the exchange rate is, I don't know. Can you look that up on uh, on some ex currency exchange website for me, Colin? What's the uh, follower to purchase exchange rate on Twitch? Uh, you know, I personally, I I think that's probably illegal in the U.S. to to buy people, but uh, I could be wrong. I don't know. Um, speaking speaking of. Uh, of things along those lines. Mike, uh, there, there's word that Ricky Wild Thing Vaughn is not going to be happy with the city of Cleveland. Neither is Pedro Serrano. 
No. Or Jake Taylor. Or Roger Dorn. They're all going to be... Or Tanaka. Be very, very upset. Tanaka. You know, They're all going to be very upset because apparently the Cleveland Indians, after 105 years, have finally given in. Willie and Mays Hayes. Um, uh, Lou Brown. Bob Uecker. Yeah, Bob Uecker. Ugh. You know. Listen. Uh, they're, they're changing their name. Parkman finally. will be happy, they're, but that's about it. They're going to change their name from the Indians because it's apparently offensive. They've changed their logo. They got rid of the Chief Wahoo last year because he was offensive. They're, they changed their logo to just a giant capital C because, you know, the the red-faced Indian was offensive. Are they going to follow gonna suit do... with the Washington and does it just be called the Cleveland baseball team? So like apparently, the Washington football team? Yeah, so this year they are not – the plan is they are not going to change their name for this season because I guess it's too – too late to do that, or um, they're not going to change. Is baseball going on right now? I mean, are they? No, I don't even know. No, I don't think so. I don't think they play baseball in the winter time. I think that's a spring uh, who summer. Who hell sport. knows at this point? Um, who knows? Hey, it's Rona, baby. It's twenty twenty. They, they could be. I don't know. They could be. They could be playing. They could be playing. They could call it snowball. I don't know. Um, <laughs> they no. Listen. Apparently. They're not going to do it for the the upcoming season because it's too late. They feel to actually change the name, but there is talk that they could go with Cle the Cleveland baseball team in the interim. Which yeah, just like the Washington football team. This is the dumbest thing ever. The Washington football team they should have just changed their colors and been the Sentinels. Uh, some of the best ideas going around are spiders or rockers. Uh, the Cleveland Naps. The, the the Rockers could work because, you know, they could use the Florida. Drew Carey song. All the little chicks with the crimson lips and Cleveland rocks. Cleveland rocks. You're you going to get us could. another copyright, right? Uh, the Cleveland Fellers. Okay, well, here, let me let me really mess them up. All the little chicks with the Cleveland lips and the Cleveland rocks. Oh, no. The Cleveland what? Blue Sox. Like, we need more sock teams. We don't need any more sock teams. The Cleveland Cuyahogas. What? I, I'm How is going... that not offensive to somebody? I don't know. The Cleveland Great Lakers. The Cleveland Unions. <laughs> the Cleveland Blues. The Cleveland I think they... Cinders. No, I think they should just call themselves the Cleveland Nondescript Gender Nonspecific Team. The Cleveland Castles. The Cleveland, Cleveland It's. The Cleveland ITS, Hazards. The Cleveland Its. Oh, here we go. The Cleveland Buckeyes. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Colin, I'm not I'm not I'm not saying it. I'm not gonna say it. Uh, I, I want to <laughs> hear I, 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 I have the perfect name for them. Okay. What? The Cleveland Wild Things. No. <laughs> they should just I got it. They should just go with Cleveland. And just have a picture of Cleveland, Cleveland, from Family Guy. How about the Cleve Lands? <laughs> it's offensive to butchers everywhere. I. It's, just, it's really just getting so it, you know, along the lines like we we talk about political correctness, okay? And I, I don't know. I don't know how much further we can get politically correct, but there's an NHL team out there, the Vancouver Canucks. And one of the goalies that got traded to the team to that team in the offseason, they revealed his mask. Now, goalie masks are very personalized. Like the guys work mm -hmm. the, the goalies work with artists to create the, I mean, they're really they're beautiful when you look at them. And the amount of detail that goes into him is crazy. So, Braden Holtby, when he got traded, he is sponsored by an equipment company that one artist exclusively paints all of the masks. And he painted it with a indigenous people's 
like from like a thunderbird from like a phoenix the indigenous people's uh you know mythos myths or whatever you want to call it people got so ag- angry with this guy because he is from the netherlands the artist mm-hmm. and he did not consult with anybody of that ethnicity before painting this mask to get the true story or the true feeling about it. Wouldn't you know that the goalie gave in to pressure? He took down the Instagram post where he debuted the mask, and he apologized, and he said, I'm going to have it redone by a, a native artist. At first, I was like, well, good for him. But then I'm like, so what you're saying is if I draw something, I am only allowed to draw white people things because I cannot be inspired. But, yeah, and what does that mean exactly? I mean, I could draw Lithuanian things, I guess, because my great-great-great-grandfather was from Lithuania. I don't know what that entails. I'd have to look it up. I don't know what the number one export of Lithuania is. With my (laughs) luck, it's probably maggots or some crap. Go ahead, Shaggy. Tell me what it is, because I don't know. No, I'm just I'm looking up what are stereotypical white people things. Oh, I'm okay. trying to figure out what you could possibly draw. Uh, and and weirdly enough, Google doesn't have the answer for what are white people things. Uh, so, well, I mean, okay, oh, but, so the- wait, hold on. We can go to Boston.com, and they have a list of ten things white people like. So here, okay. let's. So they like the movie Juno. With, and they like with they like Elliot cof- Page. Yes, and they like uh, coffee. So evidently, coffee is a white thing. Uh, yoga, Yo- white people, you know, suburban moms like yoga. Um, okay, so so far, I <laughs> I I'm drawing Elliot Page doing yoga while sipping a latte from Starbucks. Fresh, fresh out of her Toyota Prius. Okay, on on top of a hybrid car. Okay, uh, somewhere there's got to be an expensive sandwich. That's okay. So in the other hand, she's got a, a five dollar foot long. Somewhere we like the idea of soccer. That's what it says. We, we white people will tell you that they are very into soccer. All right, so she can be wearing a oh vintage a, a galaxy jersey, and we're into vintage, an okay, old so galaxy Ugg boots. Jersey. Um, we like assistance. When you say the word assist, the first thing you think about is Steve Nash and Wayne Gretzky. Gretzky, but white people love to pass. I I don't know what that means. So. Okay, so uh, and, and modern furniture. We we love modern furniture, and San so she's Francisco. She's doing all of this in front of IKEA. Yeah, <laughs> but it, it happens to white people things too. Okay, so there mm-hmm. actually is a story I didn't put up, uh, but um, so in one of the marches this week in uh, last week in D.C., <gasps> there were some Proud Boys wearing kilts that were yellow and black. And they came from this company called like, like Veritas or something like that here in the U.S. And that company was on Twitter going, this was a you know, nightmare for them that their great black and uh, yellow uh, kilts were being worn and being shown on national media. So this thing came up on Twitter. It's like this, it's, you start seeing these, they're not kilts, they're pleated skirts. And that's a that's a national be people in Scotland going, that's our national dress. You can't call them kilts. Rah, 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 rah. And it's like, oh, okay. So, you know, if you're not, you know, Scottish, you can't wear a kilt. Because that's you know, you're being you know, bad to Scotland. Hmm. So this is, this entire thing is this whole thing, you know. I actually completely understand it at the um, Native Americans. I mean, look, they were here first, and we come over and, and we came over and plowed them over. Okay, so that I I, I can see that. Okay, yeah. um, 
same thing when when people like get tattoos of you know of uh, Pacific Barbed Islander wire. and you know the you know, the, you know, the tribal tattoos and stuff. And you just look at that going. Uh, it's the it's the equivalent of you know wearing shirts with uh, Chinese characters on it that say like dumb so, white person made me make this shirt or stuff like that. Just it's it's, it's that level of thing. So what you're saying is cultural appropriation is bad. I'm saying so, some so cultural what, appropriation what, is bad, but the so idea all of a sudden saying, Colin is talking about this, and I'm saying to myself, Jesus Christ, I have to go and make an appointment after the new year and get this goddamn tattoo on the back of my neck cut, covered up because I have a fucking Chinese character that I have culturally appropriated thanks a lot to alcohol in Las Vegas. Well, at least those are white people. Son thanks. of a... <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm saying I can see the point, but I think it's getting a little bit overblown. I, I think people have a a valid, an extremely valid point when they, you know, when they complain about a big corporation like Disney, for example. And Disney has to step very carefully. Okay, but I, for I, for this, like some goalie putting in a, a, you know, it's just yeah. All right. Well, I, let me let me just yeah, let me go just. Ahead. Throw this out here, you know, Lithuania. Um, so apparently, I can, I can draw oil and mineral fuels. I could draw industrial machinery. I can draw furniture, wood. All right. They export a billion dollars in wood Good every year. year. Wood. <laughs> okay. I, I, I think we can. <laughs> So I, I think we beat this horse to death, and I think it's time to do to move well, on. I just want to mention one thing. So, in my research of Google and stuff, people white people like, I found that someone actually wrote a book called That's ridiculous. "Stuff White People Like: A Definitive Guide to the Unique Tastes of Millions." But what I find funny is that the in the frequently bought together, okay. This item, stuff white people like. Whiter shades of pale, stuff white people like coast to coast, from Seattle sweaters uh, to Maine something. And then the book, How to Be Black. I can't. <laughs> no. I can't. There's just no. No. That's an interesting cross-section, Amazon. Thank you for your suggestions. Uh, but as we move along, it is now 7.30 and, uh, you know, central time, 8.30 Eastern. So we move on to uh, the only real recurring segment on our <laughs> on our entire show right now. Uh, for over uh, three years, we've been telling you what movies to watch and what movies to skip by as Netflix, Amazon, and other streaming services tell you, hey, you watched this, so you may like this. For those of you that are a little bit unfamiliar with this, uh, this all started from the fact that I watched Cowboys vs. Aliens one day, a very big blockbuster film. And then when I was sick uh, a couple weeks later, Netflix thought and my you know, temper you know, high temperature brain thought, why not? Let's watch Cowboys vs. Dinosaurs uh, because that's what's recommended. And so... We took it upon ourselves then to start letting Netflix, Amazon, and the like decide what we watch from here on out and let you know if there happen to be any streaming gems out there in, uh, in the entire web. And as is it's December, we have restricted ourselves to the Christmas theme. Uh, so last week we had a couple of, of films. We won't call them great films. We'll just call them films. Uh, you know, and this week it's much the same. We have another couple of, of interesting films. We have A Bad Mom's Christmas and Operation Christmas Drop. So, Mike, um, which one would you like to start with first? We're going to go in alphabetical order. We're going to do A Bad Mom's Christmas. A Bad Mom's Christmas. And, Mike, we will actually start off with you. Okay. Full disclosure. We are breaking a rule of ours with this movie. Because this is a sequel, and I do not recall. Did we, well, now I'm thinking about it. Did we review Bad no. Moms? No, we didn't. We did. we did not. So we're breaking our own rule here. But that's okay. 
because they're hot. <coughs> Where you find a camel in There is a lot of colorful language in this movie. We're not I'm not even 10 minutes in and I'm thinking that this is this is if I didn't know better, I would think I was watching Andrew Dice Clay in his prime. Because there's I, I've heard about 17 F bombs in the first 15 minutes. Half of them were by a 10 year old. Y'all see this scene in the mall where kids is running all over like a bunch of drunken midgets. And then the moms go to get drunk in the food court. There are two reasons why I hate kids in malls in New Jersey. All right. Uh, the first one, they don't sell beer at the food court. Second of all, that is how kids act. I am pretty sure that if Kim's mom or my mom snuck into the bedroom while Kim and I was having, having sexy time, there'd be grounds for divorce. There would be no questions about it. There'd be grounds for divorce. And now I want to play trampoline dodgeball. Can we put that on the list when we eventually, in this decade, get together? Hopefully before one of us is in danger of breaking a hip. I want to know if anyone else got a little uncomfortable during the Santa waxing scene. Can some, or was it just me? Leave that out there. You guys can just comment yes or no. Look, I get kind of annoyed with movies when the storyline goes, I hate you. We're getting along better. My God, you are evil. I love you so much. This is, this is like Hallmark-style storyline right here, and I don't like it. <laughs> when they're fighting in the house, I got to love some of the things that Christine Baranski's character is yelling out. Those were from the Titanic, and that was moon ice. You want to talk about pretentious shit right there. Kiki head pajamas. I know where y'all can get PJs like that with your face on them for your friends. <laughs> Santa shows up and says, this dance is not going to be kid appropriate. I know this right off the bat. Not... Uh, Listen, I did not need the dance montage thing at the end. We were getting along so well. So puke the Snikes. This is not going into the Christmas movie rotation at Butterstown. But I'll give it a smirk. This is a good one to put on a hol during a holiday party. Kind of like if Santa Claus comes to town and had a love child with the hangover. You know what I'm saying? So if you got that kind of crowd and there's a lot of drinking going on, then this this is a good one to keep in the background. Otherwise, a lot of not safe for work stuff in this one. <laughs> All right, uh, Colin, you're up next, and then I'll uh, I'll finish it up. Okay. So yeah, this is uh, a sequel to a movie we've never seen. More importantly, a movie I'll probably never see. But. I will say this movie is very obviously not aimed towards three middle-aged white guys. Okay. So just that right off the bat. Now I will say there are several excellent actresses. I mean, yeah, anything that has Susan Sarandon in it, it's going to be good. At least acceptable. Um, and everybody in this movie, I think did a great job. Um, that being said, this is not a movie that's aimed towards me. I I laughed a couple times. I was mostly bored. Um, you, you kind of I don't think it quite resolved well. There just I don't like. There is two sets of moms in this movie. There's the there's a younger set, and then there's their moms, and I don't think there was a good enough connection. 
I think they're trying to force more of a connection between the older moms than there really was actually in the script. And I think that's... I think the kind of scene where you have like the three of them forced together in some part of it um, would have been helpful. Um, I don't know. I'm going to give this movie a smirk instead of a meh. Uh, I think it was uh, an acceptable movie. Um, I don't find myself ever wanting to watch it again. All right. Um, okay. So that is now my turn. Okay, so uh, like the other two said, this is a, a sequel to uh, Bad Moms, which I have not watched yet, uh, but it is going to be on my, my viewing uh, list. Um, you know, the, as much as Colin said, this wasn't up his alley. This is up my alley. All right, this is my kind of Christmas movie. All right, this is... And for Mike to say... This is a Hallmark style movie. If this was a Hallmark style movie, I'd watch more Hallmark style movies. All no, right. No, 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 no. That's not what I said. Uh, so, uh, this was a funny movie that I laughed many times through, which is difficult because I watched it today while I was also on conference calls for work. So, inexplicable laughter at poor times doesn't work out well. This was a great movie, and I have some examples of why this is a great movie. So here are just a few lines that Colin probably, he may have chuckled at a couple of these, but I guarantee he cringed more than he, more than he chuckled. Uh, so here are the lines. Then you punch the wall and scream the F word. You played the game seven times. Well, it was really six and a half, but who's counting? Let's go slap some wieners, bitch. You're not allowed to smoke a cigarette in here. That's okay. It's not a cigarette. Was that a broken dick on her face? You should never have to watch your mom lick your boyfriend's nipples. Thanks for almost learning his name. And I feel like it's better if I do it through the universal language of dance. All right. If you want context for any of those lines, this is the movie for you. Not that some of them even need context. <laughs> but this movie is, it has a lot of funny people in it. All right. And even the people that normally play straight are funny in this movie. The only downside that I will give this movie, and I understand why they did it, is I really wanted Magnum P.I. in this movie more. All right, they basically used him as a prop piece. And I think that uh, I would have liked to have seen him in this a little bit more uh, than what he was actually in this. So that's really my only complaint. So with everything that I love about this movie, it's going to get a shnikes from me because my wife actually asked me, what movies do we have on the list? And I had forgotten um, that this movie was on was on and now I'm going to make her watch this movie so that for me is a Snikes movie when I have to when I'm going to force my wife to watch it all right so let me just say I have seen the first one oh, okay I had seen this one before as, as well um, your complaint about Magnum P.I. Jay Hernandez not being in this enough mm-hmm not the issue in the first one. Great. He's in it a lot more. Um, in the first one, Christina Applegate is in it a lot more. But you don't have any of the moms. Okay. Well, that's okay. Right? I didn't even realize. Yeah, okay. Okay, yeah. Christina Applegate was just a bit part in this one, right? She and was she just kind of had a cameo or something. During, yeah, during the uh, during the caroling. Okay, boy, yeah. she looks different. Okay, all right. So the next movie that we have up is Operation Christmas Drop, and we will go in the same order. So Mike, we will go to you first. All right. So I am used to seeing the captain 
in Vikings, where he plays Bjorn Ironsides, son of Ragnar Lothbrok. I'm curious to see how his acting chops are in a modern slash romantic slash non-Viking setting. Her boss is sending her away for Christmas. That sounds like a job I'm going to stay at and a career path I want to be on. I noticed three things about the guy's Jeep right away. One, there's no rearview mirror. Very common in TV driving, movie driving, and y'all are going to notice it from now on. Two, there's no passenger side mirror. Three, no spare tire. Now, one and two, I can almost see but the third one nobody with a lifted jeep wrangler is going to drive around with no spare tire that's a fact and he left his keys in the jeep listen that jumpsuit's got pockets dude take the keys out the jeep this chick just gave away her designer gucci bag might be a merkin i don't know and all of her stuff and she's still going to try and shut them down i and it's something mm, christmas Spam. That's a damn great idea right there. I love spam. Now the passenger side mirror is back on a Jeep. How is this not a continuity error on IMDb? Explain that to me. Uh, I'm not a fan, again, of the hallmark formula of movie making. But it's very clear that this movie is following that formula because these two is falling in love. And here he goes. You see, he's doing the mic dance at the Christmas party, and she's doing the Elaine from Seinfeld. When did Bose get an Air Force contract to do the headsets for all of the pilots? I'm just curious. And this was actually based on a true story. Now, if I had known that going in, I might have been a little more interested and a little more lenient on the damn thing. Uh, this is this is going to get um, it's going to get a laugh, which is just a, a, one one above a smile. One, it was I originally had it at a smile, but once I once I found out this was based on a true story, and the the guy that was working on the generator is actually the pilot that this story was based on. That kind of bumped it up a little bit. Maybe I missed where they said it was based on the true story, but I would like to know that earlier on. Yep. All right, Colin, you're up next. You're muted. There you go. Sorry, a lot of noise going on. So, um, yeah, just to correct slightly, so the Christmas drop is real. The base is real. The the people are all fictional. So there was no actual... That was actually my biggest problem watching this movie. So the plot is that this congressional aide has been sent to try to pull up dirt to say that this base should be closed. Well, the problem is this is Anderson Base. This is, this is our... This is the base on Guam, Okay. So if you know anything about the U.S. military, this is almost like saying, hey, I need to close a base. I was thinking maybe we should close this base here in D.C. I think they call it the Pentagon. Um, closing this base that's in this movie is nearly the level of closing the Pentagon. This is, this is an extremely important base. So the idea that anyone would even think about closing it is just, it's just insane. Uh, so I had some problems just kind of getting into the movie to begin with, just because it's like if they had made it more fictional, it had been better, because the, the, the plot line didn't make any sense. Now, let me take a step back here. I had high expectations for this movie because it's directed by Martin Wood. Now, for those who have not heard the name Martin Wood before, he is the co-producer of such important uh, genre TV shows as Stargate SG-1, the other Stargates, um, Sanctuary, Travelers, um, basically, oh, and uh, Jeremiah. I mean, 
he is in involved with lots of stuff. He's still J. Michael Straczynski, but he's done lots of shows. So I was thinking, oh, this looks interesting. So this is like one of the very first movies he's directed. He's mostly directed TV shows. So I was like, okay, this is interesting. Um, and uh, what we got is uh, Hallmark's Paint by Numbers um, movie. There's there's nothing uh, surprising or of interest of this movie. Um, there was a bit of emotion in the actual um, uh, drop sequence. I thought you know, so. That was that was something that moves it up a bit. Um, I would say the ending of this movie is very weird because as a romance movie having the end be, okay, these two people that we decided to put together in this movie and say, oh, it's the romance. Um, uh, at the end of the movie, just they're, they're on other sides of the world, and there's no continuation of any possibility of a relationship there. So you're looking at this going, okay, um, so this was a movie. The, the, the Christmas drop's a real thing. That's interesting. That's good to know. But as far as the plot line of the movie goes, it either A, didn't make any sense, or B, ended up not doing anything. Um, they could have done some stuff. I mean, they could have had the, um, was it Senator? I, I think the, the Senator could have had more to do, so there, there was more character there. Um, so, so you felt like uh, you're, you're happy in the end that she unscrooges. I, I don't know. Um it was a pretty movie. It was done on location. Um, so it's, it's, it was nice to look at. Um, but I think there was a lot of missed opportunities to have some, some more of a movie there. What it comes down to is someone saw a, a story about this, this drop, this Christmas drop that happens every year and said, Oh, here's the idea. Let's make a movie about this and sold it to Netflix. And since Netflix is, pouring money into anything for more content, this movie got made. Um, I'm going to give it a smile uh, because uh, I at least felt some emotion to it. Um, and um, hey, if you like Hallmark-style movies, this might be one of the best Hallmark-style movies you'll see. Okay. Uh, so I guess I'm up next. Um, so here we go. Okay, so um, first off, just a slight correction. So, so Colin, you said no one in the movie was real or portrayed as, as real, um, you know, or or played themselves or whatever it was. Was it was a real individual involved in the Christmas drop? That's actually not totally true. Bruce Best, uh, no, otherwise known as Brother Bruce, uh, who showed up in the movie, was the guy who set up the solar panels and stuff like that. He actually is a real. University of Guam researcher who's participated in the Operation Christmas Drop for 40 years, and he plays himself in this movie. So to add some legitimacy to the to the uh, cast, they actually do did have someone who was directly involved and has been for years involved in this. Um, so when this movie first uh, started, I like Colin sincerely doubted the legitimacy of closing the base on Guam. You know, one of the most strategic bases that the United States has. Uh, it just doesn't make any sense. But fortunately, that actually sent me down the rabbit hole so that I knew that this was somewhat based around a true story. And yes, Operation Christmas Drop has been going on. Uh, it's one of the longest running. It is actually the longest running humanitarian aid uh, programs, you know, that the military you know combines with and uh you know when they talked about uh involving other countries in the drop it's absolutely true that all that does happen and so with that kind of a, a, a lens on this movie it does definitely as mike said change the way that you look at this movie um so it is got the formula of a cheesy hallmark movie um you know it's i also kind of likened it a little bit to uh mikhail's navy uh, you know, I saw elements of that in there where we have this uh, Hawaiian tropics based base uh, that's uh, doing some non, you know, military functions. And, uh, you know, the the aristocracy or the typical military, you know, view from Congress wants to shut down some of those things. So, 
you know, if you suspend the idea that they could potentially close Guam, uh, you know, then you can see where that kind of comes from. But in general, uh, yeah, it, it's a bit of a Hallmark movie, and that's actually one of the reasons why I'm going to recommend that my wife watches is because she loves Hallmark movies. And like Mike, I was just bombarded by this movie in my Netflix queue, and it said, hey, you should watch this movie. Um, you know, I, like Colin, have some issues that it doesn't resolve itself like a typical Hallmark-style movie where you're left with these two individuals, which by all accounts have fallen in love over this common, you know, joy and, and giveness of Christmas. And, you know, but they're going to go their separate ways, and it's not going to result in a happily ever after. Uh, I initially thought, well, maybe she'll become like the press secretary for the base or something like that and, you know, leave her position with the congresswoman. But that's not the case. That's not how it all played out. So it's a, it's a very odd ending to the movie other than the fact of you get to see, hey, this uh, this great captain who misses his family but knows what his, what his duty is to the rest of the people, you know, on the surrounding islands, you know, his family gets to come and visit him, which is always a, a nice – that is a nice part of the ending. But – um you know, the movie in general, if you're used to uh, Hallmark-style movies, it's got good pace. It's got decent acting. Um, I really hadn't seen a whole lot of people in previous work. I think it, it did well. Like Colin said, the the shots are beautiful. I think they did some really good job on the um, on the filmography of this. So I, all in all, I think it's a, a decent movie, and it's one of those few Hallmark movies that I wouldn't mind watching with the wife. So I'm going to give this one a smile overall. So... All right. <clears throat> I do want to just clarify that I did not say that Bad Bombs Christmas was like a Hallmark movie. I said it was following the roller coaster emotional track that is a Hallmark trademark. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to know um, what Hallmark sub channel that type of movie is on. Because that's the only one that I want to watch. Side note, the wife and I were watching a movie last night on Pop, not Hallmark. That w w We thought it was Hallmark, actually. Probably owned by the same company, but it was a Christmas movie. And um, it followed the Hallmark formula, all right. But this was the one that was apparently the first... <clears throat> openly gay couple at the center of the yeah if, of the movie uh, you won't see that on the hallmark channel that's a that's a sure sign occasionally you will find friends of the main characters that might be a gay couple but you won't find well, the main couple there now they have gotten into the interracial they've at least opened the I, door that way um they did, they did. this year they have their first one what Hallmark what is, has a gay a called? gay Christmas movie? Yeah, it was called The Christmas House. that premiered November twenty second with a gay lead couple. I, I really I, I, I shudder to say to see what this search is going to do to my uh, ads for the next little bit. But huh, that this is this was what was this? I forget what the hell this one was called. Um... Yeah, so there. I mean, not that we're not saying there's anything wrong with it. We're just saying it, it's been it has not been a staple in a lot of Christmas movies. Uh, so you know, to see yeah, the more lifetime. yeah, it is. It's more Lifetime, more ABC Family. You know, uh, than than it has been for Hallmark. But uh, you know, uh, for Hallmark to to step up and do one, yeah, that is. Dashing in December. That was the one that we watched last night. Oh. Oh, yeah. Boy, you're right. That Hallmark Channel won the Christmas house. Yeah, November with a replay on December 14th. Hmm. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on, Colin. You misled. Uh, what? This is dead. The Christmas house... It, it okay for the first time in hallmark's his holiday movie history a gay couple is in the mix they are brandon and jake and although they are nowhere near central to the plot they're oh, still that's not what they told the press beforehand. they're ancillary characters 
So they've had those before, or at least alluded to. Maybe they haven't seen the whole couple, but uh, they definitely uh, are not, you know, they're not the main points. According to this, I mean, this is the, this is the story that I'm reading here. The Christmas House Chronicles Brandon and his husband Jake as they visit family during the holidays while awaiting a, a call about the adoption of their first child. Well, this says... That's the plot is in the, the press before it came out. <laughs> this says they are nowhere near central to the plot in which a TV actor returns home to help his parents and brother stage a family's show-stopping inside and out holiday decorations one last time and rekindles his boyhood romance with the girl next door. Well, it's not like I watch it to make sure that the, uh, the well, I at least want are... to, if, if they're going to say this, this movie you know, features a gay couple then I want it to feature the gay couple. They, they shouldn't, they shouldn't try and, and use a, a tertiary character, you know, relationship to, to try and get, you know, more viewers into the Hallmark channel. They have enough as it is now. They they turn out like 40 movies every Christmas season with Candace Cameron Bure being in about half of them. <laughs> I mean, they had to drop Lori Laughlin, so I don't know what they're going to do next year. I don't know why they had to drop Lori Laughlin. I mean, what, what she got something going on? Uh, little thing. Little thing. Okay. All right, so our next... Oh, God. Yes, we've already set up our next show. God help us. Yeah. Because it wouldn't be 2020 if we didn't do at least one shark movie. Uh, (laughs) We're doing Santa Jaws. Yes, Santa Jaws. I watched the trailer. Looking good. I have not watched the trailer. I want this to be a total... Surprise when the time yep. comes, or nightmare, whatever you want to call it. Uh, Santa Jaws and Fat Man. Fat Man. Fat Man. I am excited for Santa Jaws. There's gonna be there's gonna be drinking involved. <laughs> well, I'm definitely gonna be watching Santa Jaws first. Yeah, as you should. I, I agree. I agree with that. Um. But I have so many better movies to watch Christmas Day, so that uh, so that's uh, uh, that's gonna have to wait until uh, later. No, I think you should bring the I whole have, family around to watch Santa Jaws. I have Wonder Woman, nineteen eighty four, to watch. Yeah. I have Wonder Woman. I have uh, Soul, um, and uh, I can't remember what else we have. But they've got a whole bunch of movies coming out that day. Soul Plane. You're gonna watch Soul Plane on Christmas. No, Soul the new. Oh, is this the one? Is this the one where they project, or they they depict the before life as opposed to the afterlife, or or something? Yeah, he like he like uh, is in a coma and goes to the before time. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, his true passion is jazz. Uh, when he travels to another realm to help someone find their passion, he soon discovers what it meant to have a soul. So it's a jazz movie. Yeah. Oh, man. With music composed by Trent Reznor. Somebody. All right. So before we wrap up, can we just talk about mm-hmm. the, the the movie remake revival that nobody asked for? Yep. Which is the Mighty Ducks. Yeah. Twenty twenty one. Let. We've remade all of these movies. 2021, nobody. Again, absolutely no vo- nobody. Disney, let's do a new Mighty Ducks. Well, Although, at least there look is on part it, of me, like I said, this way. I, I, I am kind of, I am kind of curious to see because the trailer actually shows like a millennial type twist where. The, the 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 mom is yelling at the kid as he's walking into the rink. Put on your sunscreen, and the kid's like, "It's indoors, mom." At least this way, well, it, it's not going to be a movie. It's going to be a streaming television series. Well, this yes, this is true. Um, but there's also go ahead. I, 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 but then there's 
Well, there's also the the Nicolas Cage Netflix comedy series, which I think we are going to need to somehow figure out how to review <laughs> after the new year, where he talks about cur uh, history of swear words. This should be required viewing for <laughs> everyone doing virtual learning. Mm-hmm. Just like drunken history. Yes. And the Iron Sky. <laughs> Wait a second. We're still waiting on the third in that trilogy, aren't we? No, there was never a third. What? What? Yes. I think there's going to be a third. Oh, the Ark. The Ark. Yes. Oh my God! There's a teaser trailer out. Did we know that? Did I know this? Did you know this? I did not know that. <laughs> ah, yes. Great. Yeah. What was uh, it? The teaser the, uh, trailer came out in 2018. Okay, so the the company behind it, Iron Sky Universe, they went bankrupt in October. Ah. Oh. Somebody can pick it up. Netflix. Yeah. Do it. Andy Garcia was tagged in the cast. Who doesn't want to see Andy Garcia in the Iron Sky? <laughs> I want to see him in it. All right. Oh, that's really should be that, that really should be the end of the show. <laughs> so so let's let it be. Yeah. Yeah, Good apparently idea. they lost copyright to Iron Sky, so they couldn't make it. Mm. Maybe we can. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Maybe we can get all the famous actors and we'll just do it one line at a time. Or one scene. We don't at need a time. all the famous actors. Well we'll we get just need Gary Busey. <laughs> <laughs> Gary Busey can play all the roles. Mm. For a tuna fish sandwich. Uh no, could be. <laughs> I guess it could be. All right, folks. Thanks for tuning in and uh, listening to the insanity that is PTR Radio. Uh, we're here usually every two weeks, which means we'll be back in a couple weeks so that you can tune in and listen more. Uh, so that's going to put us at the twenty eighth. So that's also going to be our New Year's countdown show. So if you want to count down with PTR Radio, don't listen live. Bring it down on the podcast and count down to midnight with your friends at PTR Radio. Uh, but otherwise, you can't just listen to us live, too. That, that's always an option. You can listen to us twice. Maybe you missed something the first time. You never know. We talk fast. You know, there's a lot of jokes that get hidden in there. So uh, we don't have any personal appearances because, well, Rona. That's why. We, we, we don't go anywhere. We don't do anything. We just, uh, you know, we, we are. We are the world. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> thanks for tuning in. Uh, we really appreciate it. I don't got anything else. Uh, you guys got anything else? I got. I don't got nothing. I got nothing. I got nothing either. So, all right, folks. <laughs> that said, don't forget to check us out ptrradio.com or check out our social medias at PTR Radio on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all the fun stuff. Uh, with that said, I'm Shaggy. I'm going. I am Mike the Ape Man. Stick a fork in us, folks. We are done. <laughs> Later. <laughs>